Hello, everyone, and welcome to one more Dizal uh, webinar. So, uh, I am Alberto. I can see some colleagues already uh, typing in the chat. Hello, Bell, so nice to see you. And uh, can you please tell us where you are uh, hearing and watching me from? Uh, where you are, I know that Bell is in Recife, so please feel free to add your name and the place where you are attending this uh, webinar from. So the topic of the webinar today is exam day countdown. I know uh, many of you have already uh, promoted the exams to your learners. Uh, now it's the time to consider those uh, few lessons before today and the exam day for you and for your learners. I can see uh, a lot of people I know uh, typing from many places in Brazil, Sao Paulo, uh, Maceió, that's great. Uh, so many nice places, Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Belo, fantastic. So welcome everyone and please uh, feel free to participate in the chat and to ask questions as well. Uh, one good thing about this platform is that questions are automatically uh, separated for me to focus on and answer them as we go along. So as I was saying, the focus of the webinar today is exam day countdown. I have here some tips, you know, for teachers and for learners, and the idea is to provide support. So um, just to give you an overview of what we're going to talk about today, uh, this is the moment where we ask ourselves, okay, we have a few classes between now and the Cambridge exam. What now? So the idea is to find ways to promote a positive mindset for you and for your learners. And in order to do this, I'm going to propose some classroom activities. By all means, you can feel free to adapt the activities to your realities. I know I have uh, colleague teachers here who work in language schools, teachers who work in schools, but also teachers who teach one-to-one -one and teachers who teach remotely as well. So uh, you can easily adapt the activities to your context. So just to give you an outline of the activities, we're going to propose this pyramid discussion. We're going to focus on the speaking test and also the other papers of the Cambridge exams. We're going to talk about preparing learners for the exam day, in particular young learners, and ideas to recap on vocabulary, on developing learners' writing skills, and also to provide some useful links for you, which this out will do. So don't worry because you get a certificate and you'll also get an email from this out with uh, a PDF of the slides and all the links and ideas that we will talk about today. So uh, once again, welcome to this session. Uh, when we think about uh, exam day countdown, usually we think of students feeling anxious or nervous, or maybe they, they are cramming to prepare for the exam, studying too hard, but we only have a few days left, right? Teachers and learners might be feeling pressed for time because there's a lot to do and also uh, little time to cover so many things. And also there is this misconception that all we need to do between now and the exam is to practice, practice, practice with mock tests. So this puts a lot of pressure on us teachers, but also on the students. The idea now is to think of a different mindset. So it's to think about the days before the exam with a more positive outlook. For example, with students, instead of doing exam practice all the time, they could practice in pairs, in groups, they could interact and do a number of activities which will involve participation, lots of group work. Also, it's a moment for teachers to give feedback to learners so that they can learn, you know, boost learners' confidence. And also, it is a moment for us to uh, help our learners to feel confident, to show that they are ready uh, you know, to sit the exam and get the best out of this experience. And most of all, 
enjoy this achievement. You know, they will be getting an important certificate, which can make a difference in their lives. So it's important that students, uh, you know, go to the exam day feeling that they can do it, that they are confident to do it. So that's the idea, to have this mindset. So the idea really is to identify, understand, and respond to learners by building a positive mindset. That's the main goal of this session, right? And for me to uh, you know, deliver this session, I need your participation as well. So uh, well, the first idea I'm going to propose is a pyramid discussion. As I said, some of the activities can be adapted to different uh, settings, different modes of teaching as well. So the pyramid discussion has this uh, objective to build confidence in speaking by repeating simple speaking tasks in pairs and groups. So uh, repetition has an important effect because once you have practice with a group of learners or with a partner, you know, the fact that you repeat this with other peers can help you, you know, uh, boost your confidence, can help you feel that you are ready to do it. And also, uh, because uh, in the speaking exam, it always starts uh, with questions. That's the idea, to practice with questions, right? So the idea really is to get learners to think about a question individually. And then they talk about this question in pairs. And pairs become small groups of four. This is why we call it pyramid discussion, because we are making the group bigger and bigger but working with a similar set of questions all the time. Then they work with a larger group, for example, from fours, they become uh, groups of eight students. And then uh, they go to, uh, no, they start working as a whole class. And then they can discuss questions. And after discussing the questions, you can elicit all the possible answers that they uh, can give to those questions, right? So. Let's try the task together, all of us here. So in order for me to do this, I have here, uh, you know, some of the Cambridge exams we will be focusing on in this webinar. So we're going to think of ideas for learners, you know, preparing to sit pre-A1 starters all the way to B2 first, right? So if you have groups of learners, you know, at those levels, what suitable questions can you think of for the following levels and exams? So what I'd like to do in the chat is choose a number of the exam, one, two, three, four, five, and think of a suitable question that you could use for this activity. For example, pre-A1 starter, what question would be suitable for this type of learner, this type of candidate? And how about B2 first? what type of questions would be suitable for this type of learner? So can you, uh, you know, share your thoughts here? What suitable questions can you think of for the following levels and exams? Uh, I'm really curious to, to see your participation uh, in the chat. Any ideas? Feel free to participate and share your thoughts. Anyone for any questions for A1 movers? Uh, which question would be suitable for this level? How about A2 flyers or B1 preliminary for schools? Oh, wow. I can see so many questions coming through. Uh, for example, uh, that is uh, one. What's your favorite color? One, pre-A1 starters, right? How many brothers and sisters do you have in the case of uh, A1 movers? Uh, somebody mentioned number five here. I'm curious about this question for number five. Would you rather watch horror movies or historical dramas? This is a great question and really, really suitable for uh, B2 uh, uh, level learners, right? Uh, how old are you for uh, pre-A1 starters? Fantastic. Say something about your family, not a real question. But Gislaine, this is a great idea that you have given because depending on the type of the exam, the examiner will not ask a question as we know it. 
but the examiner will, uh, will ask the tell me about type of question. Just like you put here, say something about, tell me something about your family, which is, no, which is typical of uh, exams such as A2 flyers, A2 key for school. So this is a great question, a great idea that you have shared. So thank you for that. I can see more questions coming here from uh, Bell. Uh, okay, fantastic. Wow, so many questions coming through. Have you traveled abroad uh, lately? Uh, what do you usually do at the weekends? Oh, that's fantastic. Well, you have given so many interesting questions. I'm going to share some of the questions that I put together for those levels, but uh, please note, um, many of the questions that I'm showing here, they can be applicable to different levels as well, right? It depends on the purpose of the activity, the kind of uh, response you expect. Maybe for some levels you ask the same question, but you expect a more elaborate kind of answer. So let's see uh, what ideas we can uh, share over here. So um, you have uh, participated uh, in, in the chat. You have given your ideas. So pre-A1 starters, I have some options here. For example, how old are you? What's your favorite color, etc. What have you got in your bedroom? Uh, A1 movers, what did you do yesterday or at the weekend? Uh, what did you eat? You notice already an element of past simple in some of the questions here. A2 flyers, A2 key for schools, uh, have you ever? Uh, what are you going to do after class, etc. Uh, B1 preliminary, uh, how do you get to school, university every day? Tell us about, so Gislaine, here is your question. Tell us about, etc., etc. So it's a very important type of question. And uh, have you been anywhere nice recently? Uh, in the case of B2 for schools, uh, do you prefer this or that? And again, tell us about, etc., etc. So uh, if you ask me, but where did you get those questions from? Well, they are questions that appear you know, in classroom activities. They may have come from course books, but those questions in particular, I have picked them from the uh, mock tests, the speaking papers from the mock tests, which you can access from our website. We had a session last month where, we where I talked about all the resources for the Cambridge exams and the mock tests are, you know, important resources. And the handbook for teachers will bring the speaking examiner's script. So I got those questions from the speaking examiner's script. But again, they're just ideas that you can adapt. You can ask those questions or different questions, etc. So the idea here is not to stop in the pyramid discussion. But what happens after the pyramid discussion? We could do, for example, uh, we could get students to summarize what they discussed or report back as well. For example, if we're talking about levels A2, uh, students could make sentences using comparatives uh, based on the answers that they collected. So I got up the earliest in my group. Uh, most of us play basketball, etc. If we are talking about lower levels, like pre-A1 starters, A1 movers, you, we could help students to summarize what they uh, discussed by, for example, uh, asking a question such as, um, sorry, uh, in my group, uh, et cetera, most people in my group, uh, and on, and so on and so forth. Some people in my group, so, you know, a very simple chunk that you could use, uh, you know, to help learners uh, to say something when they report back. If we're talking about uh, other levels, like higher levels, B1, B2, for example, you could, for example, ask them questions such as how many people, and they would either answer with you know, numbers or they could say most of us, many of us, etc. cetera, or who has the most, least, et cetera but also teaching students not only to discuss, but also to report back. And of course, 
We cannot forget that this is a moment for us as teachers to give learners feedback. So think about any useful corrections or maybe uh, any examples of uh, good sentences that uh, learners might need uh, for the exam. And if you have picked, you know, good examples coming from learners, you can, uh, you know, congratulate them for coming up with great expressions and share them with the whole group, right? So uh, we are thinking about a whole process where we start a discussion, we expand the discussion with the number of participants, and then we help students to report back on their ideas. And then we have you now a full cycle of uh, you know, participation there and conversation. Well, we can also involve students when you talk about the speaking test, which is quite short compared to the length of the other Cambridge exam papers, but it's the one that sometimes puts learners in a situation of maybe tension or maybe anxiety. So the idea here is to get learners to familiarize with the exam and feel confident, you know, before they uh, get to the exam room for the speaking test. So the aim of the idea here is to help learners become familiarized and lose, you know, the anxiety um, and also build their confidence about the speaking test. And for you to do this, our proposal is to use a speaking test video, which you can find easily on YouTube. And then uh, before you use the video in class, watch the video so that you can choose, you know, questions or maybe you can write down some questions, you know, to direct your learners' attention uh, to and help them to find something to listen out for as they watch the video, right? Well, the videos can be found in the exam preparation section of the, uh, the Cambridge uh, website, but also uh, we have uh, the videos on YouTube. So before you watch, you know, just get an image from any of the videos of your choice. Just an image like the one that I picked here, yes. And then, uh, you know, draw your learner's attention to specific parts of the video. For example, how many candidates? If you're talking about, you know, young learners, there is one candidate, one examiner. If we are talking about A2 key and above, there are two examiners and two candidates, for example. So helping learners with, uh, you know, the dynamics of the exam. You can find uh, speaking test videos on YouTube, as I mentioned, and a month ago, I was saying that we now have new speaking test videos from A to Key all the way to C to Proficiency. And uh, what is important to mention, those videos or some of those videos include learners from Brazil, learners from Latin America, so, and they have been recorded uh, in the past year. So they are recent and they have candidates, you know, which uh, students will, uh, you know, whom students will relate to, yeah? So now that you have the snippet or an image of the video, get the students to, uh, you know, answer questions such as how many candidates can you see? How many examiners? Uh, do you think the examiner is friendly? Uh, you know, what can you talk about uh, in English, you know, if you are talking to the examiner? So getting the students to uh, familiarize and predict what will happen, you know, in the video. It's important that if learners cannot answer the questions immediately or if they, you feel that they are getting stuck, you can change the question by, do you think the examiner will, etc., cetera, et cetera, so that you get the students to anticipate information as much as possible about the speaking test. Then you play, you know, the video or a short part of the video, right? And then you pause the video uh, to ask the students questions and elicit information. For example, uh, what, is, uh, what was the first question uh, in the exam? Usually it's, uh, what's your name, for example. 
also you can you know tell the students more about the examiners that they are usually friendly they they want the candidates to feel comfortable as well and um, also in the video every time there is a task involving an image there is a you know the image on the screen this is a moment where you can pause uh, the video with the picture right to elicit information about the picture from the students what they can see uh, what they would say about that picture etc right so you can also give learners some time to list things they can see in the picture or just to make a mental note of what they can see and then they watch the candidates you know performing the task and they tick the things that the examiners ask about or maybe the things the candidates talked about you know in the picture um, while doing the task so uh, learners listen they write down the facts etc and then they can make notes about the candidates as well the you know what they think the you know the age of the students are etc etc right also you can check learners reaction to the video for example would you like to be friends with this candidate or those candidates depending on the exam which parts of the test uh, did you think you know do you think would be easier for you so you know elicit learners reaction uh, more and more then you can also prepare a selection of the question that the examiner asks as I said, go to the handbook for teachers and then you find the speaking examiner's script and you have some questions there, right? Uh, so you can prepare a selection of the questions that, you know, that are asked uh, in the video and get learners to ask each other. And as they do so, uh, you know, they practice the questions that they have just uh, watched and that's the idea, you know, to help learners become uh, familiarized then you can also propose a role play like you know one learner will be the examiner the other learner or a pair of learners will be uh, the candidates and also remember uh, you no know, remind learners that depending on the question they are expected to expand their answer for example the tell me about question which uh, you know, uh, Gislaine mentioned here uh, in the chat, a very important question, yeah? So these are some ideas that you can you know, bring to class in those, you know, on those days before the exam to uh, build learners' confidence, uh, confidence and get them prepared for the speaking test. But we also have the other <clears throat> papers, right, in the Cambridge exam. I know that at this point, many of you have been, you know, may have used a mock test with your learners, but this, there's always a moment to recap on what they're going to see in the exam using different strategies or maybe different modes of interaction, like for example, uh, in this idea. So the aim here is to review what each paper looks like. You can review vocabulary and also again, build uh, learners' confidence. All you will need is a, no, a set of uh, the papers, maybe one sample of the mock test or maybe samples uh, of the mock test. That will depend on how much time you have, how many students, if you want to stage uh, this activity you know, across you know, a few lessons. So if you use like one sample paper, for example, the listening paper, you could uh, you know, stick the pages on the board, or maybe you could give the learners a set of the exam. But at this point, the purpose is not to answer the questions in the exam, but it's to answer questions about the exam paper, yeah? So uh, the idea is to elicit questions from learners. For example, how long is the exam or how long is the listening paper? Uh, what skills are tested here? What types of questions can you see in the paper? How much time uh, you know, uh, is allowed for each part, et cetera, et cetera. So get you know, illicit questions first. And here are some uh, sample questions. But I would like to see in the chat you know, other questions that you could uh, elicit from learners 
if they are, you know, becoming familiarized with the exam format. So any other suggestions that you can bring to the chat? Uh, for example, what types of questions are, are used? How much time is allowed? What skills are tested? What other questions do you, do you think we could consider for this, you know, getting to know or getting reminded of the exam? How many parts are there? Ah, fantastic. This is a great question, Ricardo. Yeah, each paper has a different number of parts and that's really important. Yeah, fantastic. Any other questions? I can see some more uh, questions coming up. Uh, thank you. Uh, how long does each part take exactly? Uh, were there part? So how many questions? So uh, how do you record your answers? Excellent, Ricardo. This is also part of the exam familiarization. Yeah. So having uh, the answer sheet uh, if they're doing the paper-based uh, version of the exam. Fantastic, thank you so much. You know, lots of very interesting questions. The idea here, just to uh, make that clear, is ask learners which questions they can answer confidently before they look at the sample paper. So, you know, you elicit the questions, then you can use those questions to get the learners to check their own confidence. So can you answer all those questions uh, confidently before uh, using the paper? Then uh, the idea is to uh, do, for example, a treasure hunt activity. So for the treasure hunt activity, you could uh, put learners in small groups and then you could hand out you know, a copy of the sample paper for each group, yeah? And uh, you can allow some time for the learners to explore the sample paper to answer those questions we elicited a moment ago. Questions about the exam, not to answer the exam questions, right? And um, uh, as, as we go along, the idea is for learners to interact, you know, uh, explore and feel confident and also to be reminded of what they are going to see you know, on the exam day. A follow-up activity you could propose is using those questions from the uh, eliciting moment. So you could create this board game, uh, you know, just get a board game template, or maybe you could do it using some kind of uh, online randomizer as well. And then you can get learners to answer the questions, you know, in a way that is more like uh, group format, lots of interaction, in a way that it's not like, you know, the pressure of the exam. So they would be practicing, playing, etc., and, you know, uh, building a positive mindset about the experience. Another set of resource you have is um, the booklets called Information for Candidates. We are going to talk about those booklets more in a moment, but you, you know, if you don't want to use sample papers, you could use uh, you know, uh, copies or uh, links with the <clears throat> links to the information for candidate booklets, where they can find lots of information about the exam, about each paper. And what is interesting about the information for candidate booklet is that it has practical information in question and answer format and also in do's and don'ts format for each paper of the exam. And we have a booklet for each exam, yeah? So you could bring that uh, to help learners and we're going to see more about it uh, in a moment. So just another resource that you can bring to class for, for the treasure hunt activity, yeah? You can do also a variation for young learners in case uh, you know you are working with this uh, age range. So for young learners, uh, you know the exam has uh, specificities like colored uh, images, etc. It's quite attractive because it is an exam for young learners. And what you can do is, for example, uh, help learners uh, to become familiarized by. Uh, showing uh, parts of the exam 
you could show them, you could stick, you know, a copy or you could project because, you know, many teachers, you know, might be in a room that has a projector. You could project and you could ask learners to come to the board. And when they come to the board, uh, you know, get them to focus on the instructions for each uh, task in the exam. For example, where do they have to draw a line? Or maybe where do they have to write a word? Where do they have to write a number, for example? Or which part do they need to color? So focus on the instructions for each uh, uh, part of the exam, right? And then you know, check that they understand the instructions. You can demonstrate or you can mime actions as well. After all, we are talking about young learners. Again, you can find all the resources for this in the uh, exam preparation section uh, from the Cambridge uh, website. Then uh, you could also ask, uh, you know, use the images in the exam, since we are talking about uh, reminding learners or, uh, you know, increasing their familiarization with the exam. You could also use the pictures as a classroom activity. You know, they could name two or three things they can see in the picture. And, you know, then you could also say, I'm going to say something in the pictures uh, now. For example, cats. And then the first person has to run and point or touch the cat in the image, right? The first uh, student in two rows, for example, will get a point for their team. So you have the sample paper itself as a classroom resource. And I think this is um, useful. This is also time saving for teachers because we are always looking for resources. The exams themselves can work as uh, resources. And then you can say different things in the picture until all the learners have had a turn uh, in the game, right? Well, you also have alternative follow-up activities. So uh, we talked about uh, step one uh, there, where we ask the learners to do uh, draw a line, etc., understand the exam. Just to give you a reminder, step one was the one where you could show the, the sample paper and learners would have to identify you know, those activities uh, in the exam. And uh, you can make, you know, you can bring a variation to this. And uh, the variation will include, uh, for example, uh, learners, uh, just a moment, the screen is popping up because I wanted to see, you know, you could uh, make sure that learners go through instructions, but uh, also uh, making sure that for each level, pre A1 starters, A1 movers, or A2 flyers, you focus on the most uh, important activities. For example, uh, pre-A1 uh, starters, we have point and move pictures in the case of the speaking paper, yeah, for young learners. So those are two uh, important, um, you know, uh, activities or actions. In the case of A1 movers in the speaking papers, they have things like find the difference or spot the odd one out, or maybe write a tick or a cross. Uh, as well, uh, in the case of the uh, uh, reading and writing. And if we're talking about flyers, we have matching activities uh, as well uh, in the reading and writing. So uh, depending on the exam, some of the actions will be more uh, or less uh, frequent. So it's important to highlight that for the specific uh, groups that you are teaching. And if you want to practice, for example, those uh, actions uh, or instructions for the exam, you could, for example, use a handout like this, doing a point to the board game. So you could use the handout as is, or you could cut up the pictures, you know, and uh, as you cut out the pictures, you could get the learners to do a matching activity like drawing, and uh, uh, instructions in writing. Uh, this um, handout in particular comes from the mock test toolkit, which you will find in the exam preparation resources. And the mock test toolkit has lots of ideas that are ready-made for you to bring to your class and start using 
right after this uh, webinar, right? So uh, here you have the uh, QR code or the link to the mock test toolkit, but we are going to bring this again uh, throughout this uh, webinar, right? Another alternative is to stick the instructions on one side of the board and the images on the other side of the board and students will come interns, you know, to draw a line and do a matching activity. And um, since we're talking about young learners, uh, we know that uh, teenagers and young adults, they already understand, uh, you know, the um, dynamics of an exam, right? But young learners are learning, uh, you know, about how to behave in an exam session. So they need a lot of, uh, you know, guidance for that. So it's important to consider classroom management and help learners, the young learners with classroom management during the, the exam. And you can use the mock test after you have done the activities to show learners how to behave on the day because they have important things uh, to learn. So they, they need to learn, for example, that because it is you know, an important exam, they cannot you know, talk to their partners. They cannot talk during the listening paper. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, they can raise their hand if they have a question, but in the listening paper, they have to learn to wait. And, uh, you know, they shouldn't, uh, you know, borrow uh, materials during the exam. So all those things that children do naturally in the lesson, but in an exam session, they are not expected to do this. So they need to learn how to uh, behave you know, on the exam day. And also, uh, we, you know, as part of the familiarization process, help them with the sequence of the papers. In the case of the young learners, the sequence is always listening, then reading and writing, then speaking, right? And of course, the recording is played uh, twice. And also, uh, they are still learning about uh, time management. So it's important to follow the rules, yeah? And during the reading and, and writing paper, uh, making sure that they can see a clock, just like the exam room on the exam day, and also, uh, you know, uh, making sure that they are familiarized with the start of the exam and then, uh, you know, the end of the exam, how much time they have left. So for young learners, it's important to remind them of the, you know, of how to behave or the dynamics on the exam day. So in terms of preparing learners for the exam day, we have, you know, familiarization activities using, for example, the information for candidates booklets for young learners. Again, they are there in the exam preparation section. Click on the exam and you'll be able to access this resource. As I mentioned about the uh, information for candidate booklets for the other levels, the information in those uh, resources, they come in Q&A format, as you can see here. So we have children asking questions and we have the answers to those questions. So you can bring this, uh, you know, for learners. And depending on the activity, because you are familiarizing learners at very low levels, in case of pre-A1 starters, some of those questions could be done in Portuguese to make, you know, so that you can convey your message very clearly, right? So uh, make sure that uh, learners are familiarized with this so you can uh, make children aware by bringing those uh, questions uh, to the exam and also making them aware that uh, this is, in, you know, the exam is also an opportunity for them to enjoy. It's not just pressure and pressure. This is why in the young learners exams, nobody fails the exam, right? And of course, as I said, there is uh, information in Q&A format to help the learners, right? Uh, lots of ideas that you can draw from the Cambridge resources to bring to class and just, you know, turn this into a classroom activity. 
You can also uh, recap on vocabulary because um, this is very important, especially for young learners, but also for all the levels. We have uh, lots of resources that focus on practicing or recapping on vocabulary. And of course, we, you know, we cannot do a session, you know, exam day countdown without considering uh, vocabulary that learners need to recap, right, for the exam. So if we're talking about young learners, we have the word lists and we also have booklets with flashcards. Those flashcards, they are ready made for teachers and for learners. So this is just a sample of the covers of the flashcards uh, booklets, right? And we also have another booklet which brings uh, lots of ideas that you can use with the flashcards that uh, I have just talked about. And we're going to practice uh, uh, with you here now, right? So. This booklet of you know, classroom warmers will bring uh, ideas uh, segmented into levels. So we have ideas for primary learners, right? We have ideas for learners at lower secondary level. And of course, uh, they can be used with different levels as long as you make the necessary adjustments or bring the words that are appropriate for the different levels. And we have ideas for learners at higher levels, for example, upper secondary. So we're going to practice with one of the activities, but if you want to access the Classroom Warmers uh, activity booklet, you will find it in the preparation section, exam preparation section, and they are here under those uh, exams. Just click on the exam and you will find a link to download the Classroom Warmers uh, booklet, right? So we're going to do one activity, which is a classic called Kim's Game. And we're going to use the flashcards for the young learners exams, right? So Kim's Game, as I said, it's a classic and the aim is to engage students in a fun memory game. We are going to be reviewing some common objects, right? So let's imagine that we are working with uh, you know, pre-A1 starters and the level is uh, A1. We are going to be working with animals, uh, so uh, at the zoo. So display the object. This is an image from uh, the flashcard booklet, which has sections, right? Make sure students know the words in English and that they can see you know, the images uh, clearly. And the next step is show the objects and then tell the students, look and try to remember. Give them one minute to look at the objects or images. You can help them with words and then you can now hide the objects, right? You can remove one item secretly just like I did now. And the next step is asking the question, what is missing? Now it's uh, on to you. Uh, what is missing in the picture here, everyone? Let's see if you remember which animal is missing. Let me see. Wow, you have good memory. Uh, I think it's Ingrid, ah, too, as well. Excellent. Uh, good memory. Let's see. So the missing animal is the cow. Well done, everyone. So you see, you already have these ready-made uh, for your classes, you know, different levels, different images, all segmented according to topics, like you can see here. All you need to do is bring to class, project, and you know, use them with the learners. So this is a good idea uh, to uh, practice the words for the exams. And you know that for those exams here, the young learners, as well as A2 key and B1 preliminary, we have word lists. So to practice the language from the word lists, you can use those resources. We also have sets of uh, posters 
to practice vocabulary for levels A2 and B1 and B2 as well, uh, like I presented last month. It's all there in the exam preparation section, right? If you're working with higher level learners or older learners, we have a variation of this uh, game. We're going to practice first letter, last letter. And the idea here with this game is to, for example, uh, get the learners to recap on vocabulary, but they are the ones adding words to a long uh, list of words that you can organize in the format of uh, crosswords, for example. The idea is to engage students. It's a fun collaborative activity to review vocabulary. So students work in pairs and groups, or you could do this as a whole class activity. Decide on the running order of the learners. For example, student one starts by saying a word. Student two says a word with the begin, beginning with the last letter of the first word. And then student three has to say a word beginning with the last letter of students two words and so on and so forth. So you're going to come up with something like this. Someone has says friend, and then another student says dream. The other student says maybe. If they can't think of a word, they, they can pass. And uh, you know, as you go along, you can add challenge by setting time limits, right? After all, they are older learners. Or you can tell students that they are not allowed to repeat the same word. It's really up to you. You can set your own rules, right? You can also provide extra support by you know, keeping a record of the words used on the board. Or, you know, you can allow students to repeat words. You know, you can make changes, but the idea is to get the students to recap on language in a fun way. And of course, if you go to the warmers, you know, classroom warmers booklet, you will find more ideas, right? As I mentioned, A2 key and B1 preliminary also have vocabulary lists, and you can practice with the ideas from the Classroom Warmers booklet using those lists as well. You can recap on students' writing skills. I think writing is so important, especially prior to the exam, because students do worry about this, yeah? So if we're thinking about uh, young learners, it's important to ensure children are uh, confident in the spelling of the words, right? Because words are really important at this level, especially pre-A1 starter, because the exam is basically word level. But as we move, uh, you know, towards A1 movers, you know, there is a focus on students writing sentences or completing sentences and we get to A2 flyers, they have to write a short paragraph. So uh, revise, reinforce vocabulary in many ways. Also make sure that children can write the words clearly as well, because it's not only getting the spelling correct, but also making sure that what they write is uh, intelligible. <laughs> Sometimes their handwriting can be you know, difficult to, to read. <clears throat> But for um, the higher level exams, for example, A2 key, B1 preliminary, B2 first, one thing we have available uh, that can help students, you know, as we count down to the exam day is giving the students, you know, those checklists. So Cambridge has uh, checklists for the writing tasks of each of the exams. If the exam paper has two writing tasks, Cambridge has a, no, a checklist for each task. You can download them and you can help learners check their own you know, uh, writing production by looking at the questions in the checklist and then making sure that they have included all the points that are necessary. Here we have a sample of the checklist for a2 key, and this focuses on part seven, where the candidates have to write a short story. You will notice that the questions in the checklist are categorized according to the points in the criteria, right? This is the same for B1 preliminary. 
this is right in part one. We also have the checklist in the same document for part two. But you will see that um, because it's B1 preliminary, we have one more point, one more subscale in the criteria, which is communicative achievement. You have specific questions for each point in the criteria. And of course, this also happens when we look at the writing tasks for uh, B2 first. We have uh, checklists that you can download, share with your learners, and help learners check their own writing you know, as they are preparing for uh, the exam. So these are samples, but you can go to the exam preparation to download all those uh, resources, right? And uh, it's important that we use those uh, questions in the checklist in such a way that uh, we help students both understand the question, but also uh, making sure that uh, what they write meets the assessment criteria. And uh, also, uh, as they get used to using the checklists, they start to understand you know, in which areas they are doing well, and maybe identify areas where they need to improve. So I think the checklists are so practical, and they are such a nice way to get learners to understand what is expected of their writing on the exam day. So uh, Ricardo is talking about... Uh, his son's weakest area. So yes, yeah, spelling is really important. Um, well, we had like loads of ideas. I hope the ideas have been useful. And just to give you a recap of what we did, we focused on building a positive mindset on learners who are now candidates to the exams, right? We talked about pyramid discussion. We talked about ideas for getting the students to know or be reminded of the aspects of the speaking test and the other papers in the exam, listening, reading, reading and writing, etc. We talked about preparing young learners for the exam day. You know, we discussed a little bit of classroom management for young learners. We talked about ideas for recapping on vocabulary. We talked about Keen's game, but also first letter, last letter. We did a recap on helping the students to spot areas in their uh, writing uh, tasks. And I have some useful links to share with you. I'm going to start by sharing uh, the link to the mock test toolkit. But again, they are there in the exam preparation section. The QR code was, uh, you know, on the slides, on the previous slides. So you can just take, you know, a snapshot of this page. Uh, but as I said, Gisal will kindly email you everything about this webinar, your certificate, but also the slides with the links and QR codes for you to access later. And of course, uh, I'm going to share with you some links uh, that you will receive in this, uh, no, from this email that this hour will circulate afterwards. There are lots of links here with ideas for you to click on and start using immediately. And last but not least, thank you very much for your attendance. It's almost end of the year, so uh, I wish you, you know, all the best with the last lessons in your semester. But also, uh, I wish you all the best in this moment when we are in the countdown to the exam day. I hope this has been useful and thank you for your participation once again. And thank you, Dizal, once again for the space. This is a very important space. By the way, everyone, now at 5 uh, PM, we have another webinar. So this is a webinar which will talk about artificial intelligence for uh, speaking. Uh, this will be done in Portuguese. So, uh, uh, you know, remember that we have another webinar delivered by another presenter. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, have a good rest of the day.